Well, hey there, folks. Welcome back once again to the Hop House. It's Eddie here, and it's time for another beer review. Uh, time for another Virgin beer review as well. So, if you just found us here on YouTube, uh, welcome along. This is the Hop House. We like hoppy beer. We like good house music. Do us a favour. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Help us grow. Okay then. Um, Virgin beer review time. This is a Virgin brewery as well, or a Virgin. I'll say Virgin Company, I've not heard of this company before. Um, so, a friend of the channel, Andy, uh, he got a pack of beers and uh, he kind of gifted me this beer. Um, the reason being is he likes his like darker beers and stuff and this was the paler one. So he said, oh, do you, do you want to take this and review it? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, if you don't want it. Yeah, cool, thank you very much. It came as part of a multi-pack. I think there was a few beers in there. Um, I'll show you what it is, shall I? Because I'm waffling. So it's this. It's from the Snuffling Pig Company. The Snuffling Pig Company. It's Twisted Tail Pale Ale. Let's make the pigging magic happen, it says. It's 4.5%. ABV, it says so there. In a 330ml can. Now, as I said, it was part of a multi-pack. Uh, the Snuffling Pig Company. The, it came... There was a pack of so many of these 330ml cans and then some pork scratchings. Again, Andy, he loves his darker beers and he loves his pork scratchings. I'm not a fan of pork scratchings. I know, sacrilege, some of you may say, but I just I just think I'm eating like toenail clippings from pigs or something, pig strotters. It's just, it's just not for me, but you know, very popular snack. Um, and so I think that's where these snuffling pigs come from. So I'm not too sure if it's an actual brewery. We'll, we'll have a quick look and read the other spiel on the uh, can in a bit. But let's get this beer out into the glass. I've got, I thought I'd have a change up of glassware. So I've got my Ludlow Spring Festival Seba glass for this. Nice little classic candle. Uh, I just, I think this is going to be more traditional. I can't see this being like a really citrusy American hopped beer. But I could be wrong. On opening it, there was quite a lot of CO2 release. It's quite bubbly and lively. Get the beer out into the glass. It's certainly pale, very pale actually. Pale, golden. It's clear, it's got clarity to it. That's how she looks in the glass. Ludlow Spring Festival. Um, I really want to go this year, but I'm working that weekend, so I'm gonna see if I can try and book it off from work. Uh, I think it's the 12th, 13th of May, somewhere around then. Sort of the, it's actually the third week in May, not the second, because I think the 1st of May is like a Sunday or a Saturday. So it's not that weekend, it's not the weekend after that, it's the weekend after that. So it might be like the 14th, 15th. Um, go check it out, Ludlow Spring Festival. It is a little festival and they've got over 200 real ales. They've got some classic cars outside. It's in the grounds of Ludlow Castle. Anyway, that's to do with the glass. We are reviewing this beer. So the head's dissipated quite quickly, but it could well be this glass. Um, I'll jig it around a bit later on. Uh, but in terms of the look, yeah, it's certainly blonde, golden, quite light in colour, good clarity on it, see through beer, you can see the bubbles rising. Should we go for some aroma? Crikey, that's noisy. That's the, the, the flat upstairs is washing machine. Sounds like she's racing the washing machine and the tumble dryer around the kitchen. Right, let's give it a whiff, see what we can sniff. It don't smell too bad, actually. Definite lemon and lime in there. It, it smells quite citrusy, I didn't think it would. But I am getting a hint of traditional hops as well, so I'm getting like a... Um... Crikey, you can really hear that. God, it sounds like roost's gonna come in. Um, lemon and lime, and then like a little bit of orange marmalade apricotiness. Which I was more expecting, really. I was expecting it to be a bit more traditional. Smell a little bit of malt there as well. Yeah, the malt's coming through a bit more now. Definitely getting that tart marmalade. Not much spicy or pepperiness though. It's more lemon, more lemon and lime, and then that orange marmalade tartness. So it could be a blend of new and old school hops in there, new world and uh, traditional hops. Right, let's give it a try, bottoms up down the hatch. Ooh, 
chumo. Try and get the rest of the can in there. There we go. Hey presto. Yeah, it's not it's not anything like a can conditioned beer. Um still very clear, see through, some good fizz going up. It's sort of retained the head a bit more now, poured some more in. Um it's it's quite pleasant, it's sort of middle of the road stuff really. Say the body does taste a bit thin, it's four and a half percent, but I've had nicer bodies on beer at like the best bitter strength of 3.8. Um, so the body is quite thin, um, it is quite fizzy, um, it's highly carbonated, it is quite fizzy, you can see the bubbles rising up from the glass. But all in all, it, there's no off flavours to it, it's, it's pleasant enough to drink. Right, see if we can do a bit of laser vision. Lace is alright, isn't it? Ah. Try and do it without spilling it, which I think I'm going to do, because it's still quite full. But yeah, you can see, bubbles do chase the bottom of the head of the glass. It laces fine, nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, so, apart from it being thin, it is fizzy, so you can get, it really fizzes down the sides of your cheeks. So it is quite highly carbonated. Um, definitely got that sweet malt down the middle, like sweet bread. And then uh, lemon, lime. Real lemony, limey down the sides. It is like fresh citrus. It's not pithy in any way. Um, in the aftertaste, it's quite mellow in the aftertaste. It's quite dry, it's quite mellow. A little bit of that marmalade, but I'd say the marmalade Excuse me, I said it's highly carbonated. I apologise, that's disgusting. It was needed though, it felt good. Um, yeah, so when it zizzes down the side of the tongue, the lemon and lime, the, the marmalade, orangey apricotness, tartness is there also. So that's where all the flavour, all the flavour in this beer is at the front and then the middle. The back end is quite dry. It's a quick finish, it's quite dry. Um, makes it a bit moreish though. You know, it dries your mouth out a little bit and you think, oh, I'll go for another mouth for that. Mm. Try a bit more laser vision now. Got it sort of halfway down the glass. Look at that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Lace is quite nice. Um, I was... What can I say? I, wasn't, I don't think I was expecting massive things from this. Uh, I'll be honest. And I, I don't want to be negative about that. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not slagging any beer company off or anything like that. At the end of the day, I'm not a brewer. I don't work in the industry. I'm no expert. I'm just a fat bloke in a kitchen. But of the beers that I've drunk, I've never heard of the Snuffling Pig Company. Uh, oh, Snaffling Pig, sorry. Snaffling Pig. I did think it was a U. Uh, Snaffling Pig Company doesn't sound like a brewery, does it? It sounds like someone that makes pork scratchings. Uh, right, so it says here um, pale ale. Ingredients water, barley, wheat, and yeast. Uh, tropical, citrusy, easy drinking pale ale, light copper in colour, perfectly balanced, bittersweet flavour. Uh, and then it says the Snaffling Pig Co. Uh, Snaffling Pig, we think. If something is worth doing, it's worth doing pigging right. That's why we always set out to make the finest, most awesome flavoured beer possible. A citrusy pale ale brewed in small batches, snaffled in sessionable quantities, obviously, or ovs for short. Now, here we go. So, we've got uh, Snaffling Pig Co. at Snaffling Pig Co. www.snafflingpig.co.uk uh, and facebook.com forward slash snaffling pig company and then it does actually say brewed by so we've got the name of a brewery here brewed by seb brewing or seb brewing and packaging st peter's in kent uh, ct10 postcode so seb or seb looks like it's seb brewing and packaging 
So that's who makes this beer. So like I said, I didn't think that the Snaffling Pig Company were a brewery, and they're not. Never heard of said brewing before either, to be honest. Um, but then, I don't live in Kent. It's perfectly quaffable, nothing wrong with beer whatsoever. The lemon and lime zestiness is actually a nice surprise because I wasn't expecting it, wasn't expecting it at all. Um, and it's quite a tasty beer. It, it is bittersweet, they're right about that. Um, the finish is quite dry. Maybe for me, some bit more bitterness on the back end in, in the aftertaste in the finish would be my sort of cup of tea. Uh, but I can sort of I can see a lot of people drinking that. I can imagine, you know, getting this if you had this, and I guess I think they do like an amber ale and a stout and or a porter or something like that, uh, and a lager. So if you had the four cans plus a couple of bags of I guess the snaffling pig pork scratching, maybe they do some flavoured ones, maybe they do like normal pork scratching and a curried one or chili, you know, like they do with peanuts, different flavoured sort of things. I reckon it'd make a nice sort of little Christmas gifty present or a Father's Day thing uh, if it's that time of the year. And I should imagine that a lot of the beers are like this, you know, they're, they're quite pleasant to drink, nothing wrong with them whatsoever, but not really high, high calibre, I suppose. But a good solid middle of the road beer. Um, rating wise. Well, there's definitely no off flavours, there's nothing wrong with it, it doesn't smell like rusty nail, it doesn't taste of DMS or cabbages or rotten vinegar, Christ knows what. And it's quite quaffable, I'm getting down that, that in good time. So I'll give it a thumbs up. Because yeah, why not, I would, I'd have that again if I saw that, I don't know where I'd see it, but if, if, if I saw that, you know, in a bar and it was on keg, I'd be like, I'll try a pint of that. I'm quite interested to see what it would be like on draft. Uh, and Seb or SEB Brewing, uh, I'll, I'll look you up. I'll keep a look out for you and see if I can find any more of your beers out there. Thumbs up from me. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time for another beer review right here on the Hop House. Ciao for now, people.